You can't come in here yet? Come back later. I've told you not to come here until you're ready. Piss off. I've told you once. I won't tell you again. Go away. I believe that there are levels of consciousness. I think uh, you know, rocks have a certain level of consciousness. Uh, you see, if everything on the planet is carbon-based, including us, then there are some kind of hierarchy of uh, consciousness. And we seem to be at the top of the tree in that regard. The animals slightly below us, and plants slightly below that, and rocks below that. But if there's this hierarchy, why, why, why should we be the top? Maybe, maybe there's something above us, something uh, transcendent. I have, I have no proof either way. But I think it's important to uh, keep asking those questions. I think it's uh, wrong to say, well, that's it. We are the sum total of everything. Uh, I think being brought up Catholic is... Uh, it's useful in, in many ways, and it's a, it's a great uh, reservoir of symbols and ritual. For an artist, is uh, useful. Um, and I have no regrets about my education at all. I just feel that um, I need, to, I want to make my own way through life, and through life's problems. I believe that um, right behavior is logical and the opposite is illogical. I think uh, to live the proper way has its own reward and to live the wrong way has its own punishment. It's a karmic, really. It's just basically logic. Um, I think when people do wrong, they're punished somehow, and when people do good things, they're they're rewarded. But uh, it's not a matter of instant. It's not instant karma, you know. I think it takes a while, but you have to trust in that. I'm not rabidly crazy to uh, to put people in the electric chair who offend me, you know, because I think uh, justice has a way of of making itself felt through, throughout a life. It worries me sometimes that people get stuck in a loop of what they consider to be listenable. They like a certain type of music, whether it's uh, heavy metal music or country and western music or folk music, or rock and roll. Everything else is not music to them. It's just that little category of music that they like is fine. 
my musical faith is involved in the whole spectrum of, of what music is. The essence of music is actually beyond all of those categories. They're all artificial anyway, and as far as I'm concerned, they don't really exist. You can't split up into various sects and be genuinely religious. It doesn't work that way. It's uh, universal. If I'm ever asked if I'm religious, I always reply that yes, I'm a devout musician. Music puts me in touch with something beyond the intellect, something otherworldly, something sacred. How is it that some music can move us to tears? Why is some music indescribably beautiful? I never tire of hearing Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings, or Foray's Pavan, or Otis Redding's Dock of the Bay. These pieces speak to me in the only religious language I understand. They induce in me a state of deep meditation, of wonder. They make me silent. It's very hard to talk about music in words. Words are superfluous to the abstract power of music. We can fashion words into poetry so that they are understood the way music is understood, but they only aspire to the condition where music already exists. Music is probably the oldest religious rite. Our ancestors used melody and rhythm to co-opt the spirit world to their purposes, to try and make sense of the universe. The first priests were probably musicians. The first prayers, probably songs. So what I'm getting around to saying is that as musicians, whether we're successful, playing to thousands of people every night, or not so successful, playing in bars or small clubs, or not successful at all, just playing alone in the apartment to your cat. We are doing something as musicians that can heal souls, that can mend us when our spirits are broken. Whether you make a million dollars or not one cent, music and silence are priceless gifts. May you always possess them, and may they always possess you. As I was doing that film, as I, as I was making uh, the video for If I Ever Lose My Faith In You, I, I was on this kind of wheel, and I was whirling around, there were kind of crucifixes going around my head, and I was wondering, what the hell does this mean? I have no idea. I think uh, this was the director's idea. I really am not taking much responsibility for that. I think it was a cool visual image, but no, it doesn't have any uh, particular meaning. <laughs> The song, If I Ever Lose My Faith In You, um, is, a, is a statement about, I suppose, my beliefs. And that uh, I'd lost a lot of faith in, in institutions. Institutions that uh, were designed to sustain us, you know, like government, church, uh, television. And, um, and yet, I still maintain a faith in 
life itself. You know, I still have a sense of hope and a sense of optimism, even though it's it's harder to define than the things I have lost faith in. So I, I, I define very carefully with the things I have lost faith in, and and then define quite vaguely what I what I keep faith in. There are there are things that are sacred. But there are also things that are so uh, strong and powerful that any amount of irreverence will not damage them one bit. I'm uh, always suspicious about uh, organizations that seem very brittle and, uh, and very reactive to criticism. And I think, well, how strong is your faith? You know, <laughs> if you think a little pinprick like this can, can uh, destroy you. So, no. I, I, I like being irreverent, but I also like being reverent. I think everything has a time and place. The cliché of the pop idol is something I've tried to avoid. Occasionally I've failed to avoid it and always regretted it, but I don't feel I, I evoke in people a kind of fanatical response. I don't have a sort of cult following. I don't have legions of people trying to look like me or emulate me or uh, chase me around the streets. If anything, it's the opposite. I live a very normal life because I want to. So I, I don't feel that uh, I'm deified like a lot of rock stars are, you know. And they become trapped in that. They can't really move, you know, they can't go anywhere. They're too afraid because people's response to them is too hysterical. I just don't have that. I don't have people screaming at me. I don't actually want it. <laughs> I am such a Geek Out fan of yours. I can tell you Sting Trivia, July 29, July 29, 1981, the first time I put a Walkman here on, I heard da do 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 da 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 okay? <laughs> <laughs> November 17th, 1985, I saw Bring on the Night. March 21st, I saw you at the Forum in 88. That was a religious experience. It's real <laughs> Your album, Nothing But The Sun, I wish I could eat the cassette so that it's inside of me. Faith in nothing at all is, is to is to be to run pretty close to madness. I think insanity is very close behind if you are totally nihilistic about everything. I mean there's a certain sort of latter twentieth century existentialist who, you know, believes in nothing, you know, he's just a dark figure in a raincoat. It's kind of a romantic image which we've we've adopted in the cinema and other places, but uh, I don't want to be that person. I, I don't think that's terribly helpful. You got to believe in something. Flat and Fifth was um, an interval that was banned by the church. Fifth is... That's a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. A flat five, something like this. This, this is a disturbing interval called a tritone in musical terms. It's my favorite interval. But there's, my music is full of tritones. I suppose, you know, if I was a composer in 11th century or 10th century, I wouldn't be uh, you know, burned at the stake for such offences.